Shout out to Universal for sponsoring all of my crazy ideas. For this look, I was inspired by the movie Schindler's List. The movie follows a man named Oscar who lives in Poland during World War II, and it follows his transformation into the man he was destined to be. I'm using the color red for my eyes, inspired by the most heartwarming scene of the movie. And if you didn't know, according to Google, red is the color that stands for sacrifice, danger, and courage. And I think we could all use some red in 2024. I actually love how this turned out. Experience the heartwarming story today. Schindler's List, now streaming on Amazon Prime. I really hope I don't get sued for that. <laughs> You know, influencer marketing has always been a little experimental. For a very little bit of money, you can get an influencer with millions of followers to advertise your product to an entire audience of people who are going to be eager to purchase the thing because their favorite person on the internet says so. But in certain cases, they might as well have thrown the money in the toilet and flushed because they indeed will not be making any of that money back. And in even worse scenarios, these campaigns and their baked in insincerity backfires dramatically. And unfortunately, that was the case when an influencer named Myrta Miller decided to take a campaign from Warner Brothers for the new movie musical adaptation for The Color Purple. But before we dive into that, hi, my name is Kat Black, and I like to think that I make media commentary videos for introspective hot people. And if you're here, I'll assume that's you. Now, Myrta Miller is an influencer primarily popular on TikTok. Hailing from Croatia, she's found a ton of success with her over 17 million, 17 million followers on TikTok. And she's primarily known for her bubbly and engaging personality. Historically, she's done a lot of sponsorships for some really well-known brands like L'Oreal, Wet n Wild, and Anastasia Beverly Hills. I get her videos sometimes in my feed and every time I see them, I am generally leaving with a smile on my face. But when I saw this one video, I have to admit that it definitely caught me off guard. Thank you to Warner Brothers for sponsoring this video and my crazy ideas. I am, of course, bored of my hair. So today we're doing a little transformation. I was inspired by the movie The Color Purple, and today I'm going to be giving this wig a purple glow up. The movie follows a girl named Celie who lives in Georgia in the 1900s and follows her transformation into the woman she is destined to be. Also, in case you didn't know, The Color Purple symbolizes royalty, nobility, wealth, power, and ambition. So honestly, for the end of this year, I'm, I'm ready to be purple. I think we could all use some purple. I actually love how this turned out. Experience a heartwarming story with the movie The Color Purple and share your purple transformation this holiday season. Yeah. Um, now, if all you know about The Color Purple is the title, you might not immediately see the issue with this video. But if you're at all familiar with the source material, you know that that is a very strange way to describe The Color Purple. To really quickly summarize the story of The Color Purple, it's about a black lesbian woman in the post-slavery South who is incredibly and immensely abused sexually and physically by most of the men in her life. And in her childhood, the only person who ever loved her, who ever showed her any little bit of kindness was her sister, Nettie who she ultimately ends up getting separated from after her husband tries to unsuccessfully rape her. Yeah, that's what The Color Purple is about. Now, could you say that The Color Purple is about the main character, Celie, finding herself and, you know, sort of becoming the woman that she was meant to be? Yeah, you could definitely say that. But there's a lot more to it. And that's why a lot of people, when they saw this video, did not really take too kindly to it, especially because Myrta Miller is very obviously not a black woman <laughs> and definitely does not have the same experience with this source material. Now, for people who might not understand this, The Color Purple is one of those classic films that I've watched with my family, that I watched with my mom especially. I recently rewatched it in preparation for this video and girl, I cried <laughs> really, really bad. It's a really emotional film and also book. And that's why this red 
a certain way to black women who are more intimately aware of the source material. Now we will get into this a little bit later, but this specific campaign had the goal of appealing to black millennial women. And they definitely missed the mark with this one, especially with how callously she spoke about this. And naturally plenty of black women took to social media to share how they were feeling about it. The way that I've been chuckling and just like kikiing in bed for the last five minutes, I literally had to go to her page and see in real life, like if she was dead ass. And she was, she is. You had to go off of the new trailer that's coming out in 2023 because there's no way you found this movie inspiring and heartwarming. Do you know, like this is so much proof that these companies will go out of their way, go out of their way to hire white creators over black creators. We're just going to go across the obvious fact that WB could have partnered up with any black creator on this app because the movie The Color Purple is predominantly a black cast. And then on top of that, it is chronicling a black woman's trauma girl mm -hmm. you didn't even watch you don't even know what the god purple is this is so tone deaf this is so tone deaf i saw in another lady's video that the target audience was millennial african-american women so that means the women of 27 to 42 mind you color purple came out in 1985 so these women they grew up watching color purple this means something to them. And you just disrespected them. Matter of fact, you disrespected all black women. What movie did you watch? Cause it couldn't have been the same color purple that I watched. It, it certainly couldn't have been. There's, there's no way. There's no way that you found this movie inspiring and heartwarming. If you, if you couldn't have watched it, there's no way you watched it. There's, there's absolutely no way. And you need to apologize in a video, not under some comments, because we're not going to see some comments. You need to make a video on your page or pages and apologize to the community, to our community, for what you just did. I hope you go back, watch the original movie, and read the book. Because the movie is, is pretty dark. But the book, oh my gosh. Please read the book by Alice Walker, because I promise you it is nothing like the movie yeah. at all. Now, when I first saw this video, it was obviously before the film came out. And I have since gone to go see the movie. And before we get deep into some of my other thoughts, kind of want to talk about the different way in which the story is told in this new musical adaptation. By the way, by the time this video goes live, there should be a video that's going to go live on my side channel in the next couple of days, Movies in My Closet. That is the channel where I will be discussing film the way that I have on this channel. We've decided to sort of separate stuff a little bit to be more organized. I think that's probably the best decision. And on that channel, I will be uploading a video about the queer themes of the color purple and a lot of the discourse around them. But for now, let's talk about the new adaptation. The descriptions of abuse in the book are rather bleak. I mean, Celie is being sexually abused by her father who ultimately ends up giving her two children. And those children are taken from her and they end up being placed with a pastor who ultimately ends up taking on Nettie as a helper and she ends up raising these children in Africa. So like there's a lot of layers of abuse there, right? When it comes to the first adaptation, I think it was very, very accurate to the book. In fact, I haven't seen that movie in so long, but I forgot how good it was. It's a really, really good film, do you know what I mean? And I just, I thought that they did a great job translating the characters from the book to the silver screen. Mr. is Seeley's incredibly abusive husband who is also pathetically obsessed with this woman named Suge Avery, who is also eventually a love interest of Seeley's. In the first film adaptation, Mr. is played by Danny Glover, who I think did a really, really good job portraying the way that Mr. is described in the book. In the book, 
Mister is a very irredeemable character. You could almost argue that he is, in some ways, sort of one dimensional because he is basically just abusive. You get the sense in the book, and I guess also in the film adaptations, that he is this way because his father was that way, and he was probably also that way because of what he experienced under slavery. But the book doesn't really, from my memory, I could be completely wrong, redeem his character in any way. The director of the new adaptation, Blitz Bazawule, was very focused on updating the story for a modern audience. Mr. ultimately ends up redeeming himself in the musical version of The Color Purple. In fact, one of the only reasons why Nettie is able to come back into the country and reconnect with Seeley is because he went and spoke to immigration to sort out the issues that they were having. So even though we know that Mr. is incredibly abusive towards Seeley, you end the movie musical with the feeling that he's not actually that bad after all. Now, I have never seen the Color Purple musical, so if you are a Color Purple musical fan, y'all will have to tell me how you felt about the film version of the musical, but going off of just the musical on its own, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought that Fantasia and Danielle Brooks did a really, really great job with their roles. I really, really loved the music and how they actually used a lot of Alice Walker's prose. I thought that was really, really good, especially as somebody who like recently read the book. It was just all very fresh in my mind and listening to the music, I was like, oh damn, that's kind of cool the way that they translated that. But I will say, that the musical is, it's the same story for the most part, but it's definitely a more positive and uplifting story. Now, I think Hollywood has an issue with musicals. I don't know how many people understood that this was the adaptation of the musical, right? I think a lot of people thought it was just another adaptation of the book, which again, is full of very vivid descriptions of abuse. And I think that when people initially saw this post from Myrta Miller, it was really confusing because we don't really think of The Color Purple as just an uplifting story. Yes, it is uplifting but it's also so much deeper than that. A TikTok user named Nosy Bystanders actually discovered that this video was part of a $40,000, I'll repeat, a $40,000 campaign that was supposed to be split up between eight people each of whom would make $5,000. As you'll see in that post, the target for this campaign was actually black millennial women. So I had to do some digging because I had to find that brand campaign. And boom, baby, here it is. Y'all, they paid this woman $40,000 for that video, or at least a portion of this $40,000 budget for that campaign. Now you can pause to read it, but here is the entire brand campaign synopsis that they were looking for. Now pay close attention because up here where it says revisions, which might be cut off, it says that the campaign was due on December 14th. And that's why you saw the video yesterday. Now, the crazy part about it is the target audience for their brand campaign was females 35 and up, African-American millennials, fans of the Color Purple book, movie, or musical, fans of Oprah, fans of Steven Spielberg, fans of the cast, and so on and so forth. Now, pay close attention to what Warner Brothers wanted. They wanted people making purple cake recipes, holiday culture and lifestyle content, purple recipe videos, purple beauty tutorials, and that's probably how she ended up on this campaign. Also, purple get ready with me outfits. Now I think it's hilarious that she's the only one who published her brand campaign, which makes me think she got the whole, a lot of the pot of the $40,000 because I had not seen anything else inspired by Warner Brothers in this uh, brand campaign. I could pause to read the rest of this, but shout out to my Intel who sent me this campaign because honey, it's a ghetto mess. So I think a pretty valid question at this point is, why exactly was Myrta Miller chosen for this campaign? And knowing what I know on this side of the camera, I definitely understood why they did this. And it sort of highlights an almost inevitable issue that comes up when big corporations adapt stories like this. Most full-time content creators rely heavily on sponsorships because it allows them to get a big chunk of change for what is generally a minimal amount of work. I mean, Myrta very sloppily dyed a wig, plopped it on her head. It wasn't even like expertly installed or anything. And from that, she was supposed to make $5,000. 
understanding that, I understand why so many people take sponsorships. So as you guys know, I've been a YouTuber since 2005, and you'll also notice that I don't tend to do a lot of sponsorships. Honestly, that's because a lot of the content that I make makes sponsors pretty nervous, you know? But I, I also don't really want to because I personally don't like endorsing things I don't use. And almost all of these people who are approaching you trying to get you to do sponsorships for their company are trying to get you to advertise a product that you definitely don't use. And I just, I've never really felt comfortable doing that. If you guys ever see me doing a sponsorship, it's usually because I like the product and I do use it. Like I said, Myrta Miller has 17 million subscribers. And with that comes a lot of people who are going to click on an ad and purchase things from her sponsorship post. And obviously that is what matters to big companies like Warner Brothers who want to make money from their financial investment. I will speak very transparently about this and I'm probably going to get in a little bit of trouble for it, but let's talk about it. Um, let's get real about sponsorships for a second. If you have ever seen me do a sponsorship on my YouTube channel, I have never made more than about $800 from it. In fact, usually $800 is the exact amount of money that I make. And yeah, that's not nothing. I'm not gonna say that's nothing. That is money that I wouldn't have otherwise had and I am very thankful. But part of being a black creator is accepting less pay for more work. The way that at least sponsorships work within my company is that if you get more conversions, you get a higher rate, right? To me, that makes a ton of sense. But what ends up happening a lot of times is a white face is seen as the more sellable face, the one that is going to be seen more. And we see numbers wise that that often ends up being the case. And so there's a cyclical thing that happens where because fewer people watch content that features black people, they aren't able to get the views to justify the higher rates from sponsors because most of the creators who get the most conversions happen to be white people. They often end up getting the highest rates. They often end up getting the most opportunities offered to them. Because at the end of the day, even in conversations about black women's experiences, right? A white face is seen as the more sellable face. Now look, I'm not necessarily a person who wants corporations to shill on my content, right? So let's be clear. I kind of enjoy the fact that I'm not sponsored like that, right? I'm kind of okay with it. But I have been a YouTuber for most of my life. I don't like to sit around and blame everything on race. And I really hope that people don't think that I'm like complaining because frankly, I'm very comfortable, very happy. I work really hard. I love what I'm doing, you know, da, 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 da. But for black creators who are trying to make this their living, they have challenges that a white creator often isn't going to have. I know so many black women who do makeup content, who produce the same level of quality that she does. And those creators do not ever get the amount of shine that Myrta Miller does. And it's just a good example of the different realities, I think, that we have as creators where she's allowed to sort of be frivolous, have a great time, not really care that deeply about it. I have to work really, really hard to jump through a bunch of hoops to get paid a fraction of what she's getting paid. I'm not gonna say that being white means that you have an immediate path to stardom. I think that Myrta Miller works really, really hard producing the content that she does. And I think that she deserves the following that she has. She's very engaged. I think she deserves it. Let's not get it fucked up. But she didn't do any research. She only knew that she had to do purple something or other. And she got offered $5,000 for this. Like, that's insane. These are very different realities that we're in. And you know, I make content about all of the things in this book. Queer phobia, sexual violence, racism, right? Like, I, I talk about all this stuff, but they're probably not ever going to be interested in sponsoring a creator like me because, of course, that's too political, right? And that is the great irony in all of these conversations. Now, if I'm going to play devil's advocate for Warner Brothers for a second, you won't see me doing that for corporations very often, but you know, we're making a video, so let's do it. I would say that they might've went with her in order to appeal to a whiter and whiter, <laughs> see what I did there? Audience, right? I think that that might've been maybe what they were trying to do. and. 
to me, that also makes sense. It also makes sense for everyone of all backgrounds to say, hey, go see the color purple. Now, I was only able to find one other video from someone else who participated in this campaign, and it was done by a black woman, Alyssa Ashley. I think Alyssa Ashley is a really, really great person for this campaign. I think that for millennial black women, she is somebody who a lot of us are following, a lot of us are watching. I would definitely feel more inclined to see the film if I knew that Alyssa Ashley enjoyed the film, right? Like, for me, that's a great way to hit your audience. Thank you, Warner Brothers, for sponsoring this video. My makeup looks beautiful, but I want to add some vibrancy and I want to add some color. And that color is going to be inspired by a movie that I'm really looking forward to seeing. I remember watching the original with my mom growing up as a kid. And if you cannot tell by the color I just put on my lids, that movie is the color purple. And I'm most excited, honestly, to see this movie as an adult because now that I am more mature, obviously from when I was a kid, I'll be able to fully absorb the story because it is one that is extremely compelling. And I'm excited to see how some of my favorite actresses bring forth a new and fresh version of such a classic movie for us to see. Here's my final purple makeup look with purple earrings and this beautiful purple sweater to match. And if you were excited to see this movie as well, it is out on Christmas Day. As you see, this video had a very different vibe, right? Like even though it's the same concept, she's doing something purple for the color purple, it had a degree of reverence that wasn't present in Myrta Miller's video. And like I said, this definitely backfired to the point where she actually had to upload an apology. And in that apology, she said that she would not actually be accepting payment for the gig. Hi guys, so I wanted to address a sponsored video I recently made for a film. And I am not making this video to justify my stupidity or unprofessionalism. I am making this video to take accountability and responsibility for the content I post on my platform. Me as a content creator absolutely did not do my job. And my job is to educate myself about the content I post, especially sponsored content I post. In my mind, there is no explanation or justification for being ignorant. The only thing that I feel like it's a right thing to do is to be absolutely embarrassed and take accountability for my ignorance and apologize directly to the black community for being tone deaf and insensitive. And also to thank everyone for holding me accountable and pointing this out to me because I'm not the kind of person that will sweep things under the rug. I did not and will not accept any compensation for this content. With this, I just really want you guys to know that I'm deeply embarrassed and disappointed in myself. And I am fully aware that there is absolutely no excuse for it. I wanted to apologize again directly to the black community and thank you for even listening to what I have to say. I am definitely going to take my time to reflect on this. Love ya and thank you for your time. Honestly, I am not making this video to attack Mirta and I really, really hope that it doesn't come off that way. I completely understand why she would say yes to this gig. And honestly, I'm not against anybody getting their bag, okay? Get paid, all right? I'm not mad at her. It's very, again, little work for a lot of money. Get your bag. After actually seeing the film, I do sort of understand why it called for more cheery and positive marketing. But I'm really, really curious how you feel about that. The Color Purple is an iconic book because it talked about a lot of topics that a lot of people were not ready to discuss. Reading the book and then seeing the two adaptations of the book was kind of wild because you kind of saw the way that Alice Walker's work was sort of watered down to be sold to an audience that wasn't quite ready to fully receive all of the things in this book. Like in the first adaptation, there's basically two or three scenes where Celie and Suge are affectionate with each other. And that's how you know that Celie is a lesbian. In the book, it is incredibly clear. Celie is in love with Suge Avery before she even meets her. And then they ultimately end up dating essentially. And there's a very vivid scene. I feel like y'all who have read the book know what I'm talking about. That is not ever really portrayed in either film. Celie is a lesbian, right? Celie is gay. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that there's an ongoing debate about that right now, which I find to be so silly. Again, I will be uploading a video on my side channel where I talk about that. But I thought that it was really interesting because, you know, in the new adaptation of the film, 
they are very literally shown as being together, right? There's like a whole song where they're dancing together. It's a whole thing, you know, and it's a little bit more blatant, even if it doesn't go there. I think it's really important to point out that Alice Walker wrote The Color Purple from her own personal experiences. And there's something to be said about the fact that so many people want to speak around the fact that this is a book about a lesbian, right? Like I said earlier, I would say the theme of abuse is really watered down in the most recent adaptation. But I think a really interesting challenge to that thought is do we need more films depicting endless abuse? Do we need more films depicting black men abusing black women? Is it the worst thing in the world that this was a more positive story than some of the previous adaptations. And you know, I don't necessarily have an answer for that. I do sort of wish that these stories were told in a more unflinching way, because I know that that is often what ends up positively impacting people towards change. I think it sort of says a lot that the only way the work of a black woman speaking about stuff like this would ever get sold is if it's sanitized and if the themes are watered down in order to be acceptable to a wider audience. And yeah, maybe Warner Brothers should have worked with some creators who were black women who really identified with the source material. But the reality is that would not make them money. And that is what matters to them at the very end of the day. There's a common theme between Myrta Miller getting chosen for this campaign and the source material being watered down in order to sell. As a survivor and a black woman who talks about these topics for a living, I know that these topics are not popular and are definitely not something that can be easily sold by a large corporation like Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers is a corporation, not a charity, and they are only as invested in the themes in this book as much as they're able to sell them. Anyway, that's all I had to say. I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say about this topic and also the newest adaptation of the color purple. Did you go see it? How did you feel about it? Did you like the songs? Again, I'm really curious to hear from people who have already seen the musical, what they thought of the adaptation of the musical. I know that historically those have not been great. <laughs> Oh, and speaking of sponsorships, this video is sponsored by my Patreon members. Right now you're seeing several names and those are the producers for my channel. Those are my $20 Patreon members and several of the people on this list have actually been my very, very long-term supporters, especially Lilith, shout out to Lilith. Thank you guys so much for supporting me over the years. It really means a lot. And like I've said in previous videos, I am in the process right now of putting some money together to produce a pilot. So if you're interested in seeing that come to fruition, this would be a great time to join my Patreon. Anyway, on that note, I will talk to you guys next time. And as per usual, I want you to always remember and to never forget that you are beautiful and you are loved. Bye.